I'm one of six children. And when you have lots of siblings, there's lots of room for squabbling and arguments. And one of the tactics which children often resort to in, in arguments is no talkies. When you realise you've lost the argument and there's nothing more you can do, simply say, I'm not talking to you anymore. Which works fine until you realise later on the person you're not talking to now has something you need to ask them for. So in my family, it might have been at the dinner table that even without mum or dad realising yet they were fighting, it might be that I might say, say to my sister, Rosemary, can you ask Michael to pass me the tomato sauce? Because I wasn't talking to Michael, perhaps. To which he might imply or he might reply, no, Rosemary, you tell Jim for me that he's a no-good fat booger or something of the like, as kids would say. Well, that no talkies work or that, that uh, talking to somebody through another person, it's kind of funny when kids do it like that. But in fact, it can actually spill over into our relationship with God. There are often times when we actually don't address God directly either. In fact, we often try and find other ways to go to God without speaking to God directly. This is something that Jesus seemed acutely aware of. When we hear in the Gospel today that Jesus' disciples ask him to teach them how to pray, Jesus teaches the simple and familiar prayer that we now call the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, we simply say this, Father, may your name be held holy. And he goes on to teach them the Lord's Prayer. There are two versions, one we hear today in Luke's Gospel and a little longer one in Matthew's Gospel, which is more the format we're possibly more familiar with. But it's the same prayer. And in it, I just want to focus on the very beginning that Jesus, when he's teaching us how to pray, tells us to call God Father. And this is really important, that Jesus is inviting us to call God the maker of the universe, the infinite one, the one whom Aristotle called the unmoved mover, the one Plato called the source of all things, that we are invited to call that God an intimate, personal name like Father. In fact, Jesus called God Abba, more akin to Daddy or Dada. So we're invited to, Jesus invites us to share in the intimacy he has with the Father by using that same intimate family name of Father. Now, Father might be a loaded word for some of us. Perhaps the word Father for us brings many good memories of warmth and love and relationship. For some, it might be a harder thing. But if it is, I invite you to press on through that, to try to look to God as the Father whom you wish you had but maybe didn't quite have. Or to simply call God parent or mother, if that's more helpful. It really doesn't matter which gender we're calling God. What matters is we're speaking to God intimately, personally, in first person. We're not, go, not beating around the bush or going some other direction. That we are speaking to God from our heart directly. And we might speak, or we might use more gender neutral language like God, loving God, almighty God. Any one of those is okay too. Jesus' point is to go directly to God in prayer. Speak to God directly, out loud. We can also speak to Jesus and the Holy Spirit in the same way. But Jesus invites us to go to him and then with him to God, our loving Father. This is really important. And I think I notice sometimes in our, in our Catholic parishes that often we don't do that. Many, many times I've been in some kind of a, a group where we might have prayer at the end and people might begin to pray out loud and some will pray to God directly, but others will say things like, I'd like prayers for. They're stating an intention, but they're not actually praying. They find it hard somehow to actually compose the prayer, put on their lips, to God's ear. Our Antioch group does this actually very well. And every Antioch youth group meeting always ends with shared prayer going around the circle. And we're always reminded of the, th of the ABCs of prayer, which are audible, brief, and Christ-centered. So we're always invited to, to address our prayers to Jesus. And that's perfectly fine too, whether speaking to Jesus directly or to God the Father directly, we are still speaking personally in prayer. And again, I think there are people who find that a struggle. There are many people who are dedicated and prayerful, but they will pray a rosary for an intention or pray a novena for an intention. And that's a good thing, but it's more they're doing a thing for God rather than just speaking to God from their heart to his ear and to his heart. Well, there is one prayer which we are all very familiar with, which is directly to God the Father. And that is the entirety of the Mass. The, the whole of our Mass is directed to the Father. It begins with the, the opening prayer as, as we uh, begin the Mass, which is always directed you know, uh, to God. You know, Heavenly Father, we seek you this week, we praise you and we thank you for all these things through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Always through Jesus, sometimes in the Spirit, but directed to the Father. We then, in the Eucharistic prayer, begin by saying, It is truly right to give you praise, Father most holy. And the preface continues on that way until we move into the Eucharistic prayer. And the prayer, Eucharistic prayer remembers the actions of Jesus at the Last Supper, remembers God's work through salvation history, but it gets always directed to the Father until the conclusion, which is the doxology, of holding up the consecrated bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ to the Father. We say, through him, with him, and in him. Now, the him there is Jesus, because we're holding Jesus, our body and blood in, in the priest's hands, but through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever, to which we all say, Amen. So the Eucharist, the entire Mass, is a prayer directed to the Father. There's a couple of little prayers we direct to Jesus in between, but there is also one exception I'd like to point out. And that is the, the universal prayer or prayers of the faith or prayers of intercession, which are prayed by either the deacon or a lay person proclaiming those readings. These prayers are different because they are a statement of intention, not actually a prayer. So the prayers begin, we pray tonight for those who are, those who are homeless. And then we should pause and then say, Lord, hear us, Lord, hear our prayer. And that pause is meant to be there for us to then do our prayer. So the, the, the deacon or the leader of prayer announces intentions, let us pray for. We're meant to have a, a 10, 15, 20 second pause there for each of us to do that prayer in our hearts before the conclusion is, Lord, hear us. So it's gathering our prayer together and we all say, Lord, hear our prayer. So we're then praying for each other's prayers. Too often in our parish, and I think many parishes, that just gets rushed through. Lord, we pray for those who are uh, we, we pray for those who are hungry tonight. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Without that gap, so I'm going to be encouraging our readers this weekend to stop and leave that time for us to actually pray. So at mass this weekend, or whenever you go to mass next, or in your own prayer, I invite you to pray as Jesus invites us, directing our prayer intimately, personally, directly to God, our loving Father. Amen.